Well, hello, farming friends, and welcome back to another edition of Farming Simulator 2015 with me, your buddy, Mr. Moose. Well, today we're on our Bjorn Home map, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about uh, mods and specifically course play. Uh, we're going to start a little series of tutorials on how to do course play and cover all the basics for you so you'll know just what you're doing because I'm sure you've seen course play in my videos as well as other folks videos and you're probably wondering how do I use that. Uh, today we're going to cover the basics, how you get the mod, install it, then we'll go over all the features of the mod and then I'll actually give you a tutorial on how to use the first feature in it which is grain transport so while we talk a little bit about uh, the mod I'm gonna go ahead and get my truck set up so we can do some grain transport so as far as downloading the mod uh, you can get it pretty much at most of the mod sites uh, mod hosters FSUK are my two favorite ones uh, I talk about them all the time it's just because I trust them I don't think you're gonna get a virus there and they uh, tend to tend to go through their uh, mods uh, before they post them up instead of just immediately posting them so FSUK mod hosters has um, uh, the course play mod there you can also get the um, the course play mod by going to the developers site straight up and that is at um, courseplay.github.io forward slash course play and I know that's a lot to think about and remember but I will be putting the link for it in the show notes so just uh, you can look down below here click on the link and that'll take you there you'll go to the download section and save that to your computer what you're gonna get is a zip file and it's gonna say something in the instance of ZZZ underscore course play all you've got to do is take that zip folder and put it in your mods directory for farming simulator and you are good to go um, now if you don't know how to install mods you probably do want to do a quick Google search and um, and get the information on how to get it into your mods folder your mods folder most likely is in your documents folder under games there'll be a folder for farming simulator you open it up and you'll see a folder a subfolder called mods just double click into it and that's where you're going to paste that ZZZ underscore course play all right once that's in you're good to go you just fire up the game and then you come inside and in your help menu you're going to see at the very bottom it'll say right mouse show course play hub so to bring up the course play hub you right click on your mouse and there it is now you can change if uh, if the right click bothers you a little bit you can change that setting and what you do the gear here is your settings menu and you can come to the very first part of it says open course play you can either set it to your right mouse button or you can set it to left control and delete I'll be honest with you most of the time I leave it on my right mouse button however if I'm using something that does require that I use the mouse buttons let's say uh, I'm using a front-end loader uh, the scorpion Ponzi scorpion king the Ponzi Buffalo or the telehandler I go ahead and on those different devices I go ahead and set it for the uh, left control delete now we'll say this these control settings are dependent per vehicle each one of them is different so I can set it right mouse for this truck but on my um, telehandler I can have it set for control and delete okay so just keep in mind the settings are for each individual uh, vehicle so if I make an adjustment uh, in the speed for this vehicle it's only for this vehicle it won't pertain to any anything else however my courses that I do record courses are global so any vehicle can use a, a course that you record and you save and we'll go over that in just a little bit so we've got course play we've brought it up this is what you're gonna see right off a of hand it's gonna bring you to the course play control panel which is going to give you the ability to record a course uh, calculate field edge path we'll get into that a little bit later on it just basically it figures out the size of your field for you and and sets all the waypoints for it it's not really necessary right now because when you do install course play and you start up for the first time on a map it's going to ask you if you want to scan your fields it's going to ask you two questions do you want to automatically scan fields 
you're most likely going to want to set that to yes. Otherwise, you're going to have to calculate your fields every time. It only takes a couple of seconds for it to do it, and it will rescan every time you restart the map, which is good because if you make a small change to a map, it's going to know and it's going to make those adjustments. The second thing it's going to ask you is how you want to pay your wages. Do you want to pay your hired hand um, by the hour like the game does, or do you want to do it for free? Uh, if you want to keep it realistic, you're going to want to say yes, and you're going to want to pay your hired hands. If you're cheap and you just want to do slave labor, you can, you know, say no. I'm just kidding, guys. But uh, if you did want to play without any wages being played, you do have that option to do it. Uh, I would still say just go ahead and pay them, okay? Because that's part of the game, uh, to pay your hired hands. With that in mind, you come into course play. It brings up this uh, menu for you. And this is where we're going to start from. Across the top, we have some different settings. You have your window here that gives you the information as to what you're in. And down across the bottom, it gives us our work modes. Now, going across the work modes, the very first one is grain transport. We're going to be covering it today. Uh, if I mouse over it down at the bottom, you'll see the information for it. It will tell you that it's grain transport. The loading is at the starting point. The second one is your combine mode. It's uh, what you would use to empty a combine and then have the tractor drive to a delivery point. So uh, let's say you're in the field, the tractor empties it, you'll record a course that will um, come back to this uh, grain silo or to a cell point to dump off the load after you have uh, emptied out the combine. The overloader feature is the third button and what that is is that lets you take an overloader into the field. The tractor with the overloader will drive around and it will f unload the combine and when it's full it will take its grain to a offloading point where you'll have another vehicle setting that it will dump its seed into and that vehicle will handle the transport to and from either a cell point or a silo. Uh, next is fertilizing and seeding. Pretty straightforward. This is what you're going to use if you want to automate your seeding and fertilizing a field. There are two courses that you set up in it. First is your seeding course or fertilize, you know, your work course. Uh, that's how the tractor is going to drive to seed and fertilize the field. The second course goes with it that is a refill course that if you're in the middle of seeding the field, it will go and refill the cart that you're pulling and it will come right back to where it left off and it will continue to seed or fertilizing. Very helpful in the beginning of the game where you're using one of the small seeders that can't cover a lot of acreage and you need to, uh, you're gonna have to refill several times. If you're automating it, it will let it do that and they will, uh, when it runs out of seed, it'll go refill and come right back and keep on going. Really handy when you're doing potatoes and you're automating that. Transfer is uh, straightforward. It's point A to point B. Uh, let's say you are, are getting ready to do a big harvest on a field that's uh, clear up on the map. For us, uh, our particular farm is right here. We've got a couple of fields up here, 34 and 39. When I'm getting ready to harvest it, I've got our course recorded that starts here at the farm, drives up here, and has a spot where all of the equipment will will rally together and instead of having to drive each individual piece of equipment up there I can just get them set them on the course let them go up there and I don't have to do that myself and it's a uh, it's nice when you're doing a harvest because you can send the combine you can send your overloader you can send your your tractor trailer all of them up there and you don't have to do it or let's say you need to take something down to the on this particular map you need to take something from the farm down to the pig the pigs I mean the cattle down here you don't want to have to drive that route all the time so you can send it straight down there and you don't have to do it especially like if you're keeping all your equipment up here and you're going to cut a green field and make hay bales uh, you can send all your your gear down uh, in the transfer mode from point A to point B and that way you can send three tractors at the same time uh, without having to spend your entire time uh, moving equipment. Nice feature to have. Then you have uh, this is field work mode. Anything that's other than seeding and fertilizing will be done in field work mode. Plowing, cultivating, um, windrow, mowing, um, 
combine mode uh, well if you're running a combine a harvester uh, you're going to use that in this mode um, let's see I mean just basically anything that you're going to do uh, when we get into bale collection it'll be done in here so work mode it's it's your workhorse mode of things to do we'll get into it later uh, this is uh, self unload for harvesters so if you're in your combine you can set something off to the side of the field and it will it will run the field and then go dump into that bin when it's uh, when it's full uh, manure transporter we'll get into that that's for doing your uh, manure spreading and then the last one is uh, fill and empty shovel mode and it gives you an icon here this is for doing front end loader work um, telehandler wheel loader anything that you do repetitive motions with a shovel uh, or a front end loader device this is what we're going to do that that's the mode for it to automate it so those are the basic modes and then across the top you've got um, your this is your um, driver mode for in a harvester uh, this button here it's grayed out because we're not in a harvester but if you were in a harvester and you had a um, you had a tractor working combine mode to uh, unload you this is the button where you call him to come and unload your harvester the uh, so if you're in manual mode this is the one you would use to uh, to tell him to come unload the harvester again this is your course play controls this is your basic controls you're going to use this all the time it's uh, basically how you start and stop things the next is your managing courses uh, this is where your recorded courses are all kept you can organize uh, you can recall them using this map uh, the first folder here recalls it uh, loads a course in or if you have a course and you need to merge another course with it that's the button you'll use uh, amend courses at the end is your next button this is your um, organization that allows you to move a course into a subfolder and this is the uh, the trash can to delete a course uh, and then if we move over this is a settings uh, that uh, we'll get into in a little bit it will give you um, more uh, features on how to um, change uh, offsets and stuff if you're in a if, if you're in a vehicle it will let you set like tool offsets and things of that nature um, this is uh, harvester select if you're in combine mode and you're doing something so I think combine mode I'll go ahead and open that back up again side offsets uh, in your uh, settings here settings in for combine mode side offset it's the distance away from the combine that the uh, tractor is going to be so you can set your vertical offset as well turning circle how tight a radius you want starting at 50 percent that's uh when do you start driving to the harvester at what level the harvester is when do I go to fill it up and drive out on at is when my vehicle is how full how far how full do I get it before I go to a sell point or an unload point uh, manage combines <coughs> excuse me I had to cough there manage combines uh, just lets me select the combine that I'm going to be working with if I'm in combine or overloader mode speed limits I can set the how fast I want my vehicle to go when the automation is taken over it um, the higher the speeds the more likely you're gonna have to have some sway and things like that on particular vehicles that you're running I know for me I usually set that around 20 miles an hour and then I don't have to worry as much about the vehicle swerving all over the place running into trees and things like that so for me on every vehicle I do I pretty much change that number and I crank it down to about 20 miles an hour no matter what I run the court record the course at they're gonna drive maximum speed of uh, 20 miles an hour so I always cut that down turn speed is if they're making a tight turn how fast they make that turn field speed is how fast they run through a field and then uh, your street speed is on the road unload at the BGA is how fast it goes through a trigger point such as at a silo or at the BGA how fast does it go through the big bunkers to unload at the BGA about three miles an hour is where you want to keep that and then speed down at the bottom allows you to select between the speed at which you recorded the course or the maximum speed determined by uh, up here 
you can just run flat out at 18 miles an hour or 20 miles an hour if you're in maximum speed. If you're in from recording, if you slowed down a little bit for a particular turn, it's going to slow down for that particular turn. So and that's the way speed works. Settings, it allows you to go through and just tweak course play a little bit when your warning lights are on, whether you want to use beacons and hazards, uh, just some different in things. The biggest points to here are it will uh, let you determine how you open course play, whether that's right mouse or control delete, and then show waypoints. When you're recording a course or you're selecting a course, it will uh, show you how many, uh, it will let you see like uh, how many, I don't have a course right here that we can use. Yeah, we do silo to windmill. We can pull that up, and I can uh, pan around and let you see this. Uh, what that does is, if we go into settings again, show waypoints. Starting in, it's just showing me the start and the end of the course that I have. Uh, if I say show all, it will show every waypoint and the course that we're going to be driving. Uh, and then I can, of course, say none. So that's that feature. I'm going to delete that course because we're going to be re-recording it. All right. And then... Uh, your tractor here gives you drive settings and that will change depending on what vehicle you're in. You can activate four wheel drive on the vehicle. Uh, then the last two settings here are for if you're doing some sort of uh, farm work, uh, you're doing uh, work, you can actually make a course, generate the course based on the field you're in. You've probably seen me do that a lot. And then this is shovel position for when we're using the fill and unload uh, shovel uh, system and that will clever a, a little bit later on so that's the basics of course play and all the buttons that are on here uh, just kind of laid out for you but like I said we're gonna go over grain transport now this is handy little route for you you'll use it basically two times uh, in the game as far as I've only really found two real uses for it grain transport is great for what we're gonna use it for today unloading your silo and taking the grain to a sell point you can also use it in overloader mode if I'm going to use my 18 wheeler to um, take the grain from the overloader and then bring it to this silo I would record a, uh, a point on the side of the of the uh, field would be where I start at for the overloader to load me once I'm completely loaded then I would drive that course go over the silo um, right here it would dump and then I would go back to the same point in the field and wait for the overloader to come back and fill me up again but uh, for today we're going to just use it as hauling grain from our silo to a sell point so how do we do that well first of all when we mouse over the button and you look at the the tooltip it tells us grain transport load at start that means our starting position is where we load our trailer so we want to move ourselves before we start recording our course we want to move up here to the silo get underneath the grain silo and if I was to hit my uh, load button it will should bring up oh, I got to take the top off of my uh, I got to take the top off my trailer if I hit my load button it should tell me if I'm in the right position that I can load my trailer and I must not be in the right spot so hold on while I pull up right to it there we go now I could start filling if I wanted to I'm not gonna fill right now uh, I just want to get into the right position to start recording my course now we're gonna hit start recording and we're gonna record our course and this time we're gonna go to the windmill and when I hit record, you'll see up our, I get a new panel of buttons. And these control our recordings. The stop button stops the recording once we're, we're done. If you hit that, you need to be finished with your course. There's no going back and amending it when you hit the stop button. Now, if you do need to make a correction to the course, you can hit the pause button. The pause button will stop recording where you're at. Well, it will pause the recording where it's at. And it will let you make some edits if you need to. Now, really, only edits you can do is er er erase some waypoints. Let's say I move over here and I mess up my turn a little bit. If I want to go back and fix the turn or whatever, I can pause. And I've got this little delete button will let me 
Oops, I didn't do enough of them. So we'll just we'll get this in a little bit. Um, <laughs> I forgot I got to have a few more way buttons, waypoints before I do that. But it will let me. Uh, this button will pause. This one will let me delete waypoints. This lets me set a waypoint. Uh, waypoint is like determine where I'm going to load or unload a trailer at. Uh, this sets cross points between courses. This sets your turning maneuver, begin a turn maneuver. We'll get into all that later on. And then this is reverse mode. If you're doing something with, let's say, a, a small tractor, telehandler, front loader, you need to back up. And that's uh, going to set reverse. It tells course play where you start backing up at. Okay. Uh, basically switches from forward and reverse on the AI. So for our instance, we're just we're recording our course. We're going to move on, and we're going to head out to the windmill. And uh, I'll deliberately make a mistake here in just a moment, and I'll sh show you how to use that delete waypoint and pause uh, properly. I thought I could do it with just a couple of waypoints, but apparently I have to have several uh, before I can make that work. And now, one thing it will tell you when you're recording a course, kind of be thinking about how am I going to use that course? Am I going to have multiple vehicles use that course at a time? Um, am I going to have this course run where another vehicle might be running a course? Uh, that way I want to record it so as you see I'm using the right side of the road just in case I might have something coming down the the other side of the road uh, I want to make sure I give them a little ways to pass otherwise if I have two vehicles automated that are in the same general area they might run into each other and I might have some problems so uh, I just kinda give myself a little run now let's say I make a mistake right here and I think I need to turn on this road and then I realize oh no I should have gone straight well this is where I can use the pause and the delete I can pause my program right here and you see that little trash can did light up. It allows me to delete some waypoints backwards. So I can just delete them back to a point where I was solid in my in my course. And then I can go back to that point, line up with it. And when I'm ready to continue my recording, I can go ahead and unpause and I can continue to record my course like nothing ever happened that comes in really useful guys I'll tell you I can't tell you before I learned to use that how many times I recorded a course and right towards the end I made a mistake like I hit a tree and um, I had to start the recording all over again because I didn't know I could uh, I could eliminate that those waypoints alright so for unloading, all we have to do is drive over the grain unload point, the trigger point as it's called, and then uh, course play knows that when it drives over that, it automatically needs to unload. For demo purposes, I'm just going to do a tight U-turn here, and we'll head back to the farm. If I was doing this for gameplay, I'd probably have it just kind of route around the road and uh, come back around a different way but for just demonstration purposes I'm just gonna have it come through here and then we'll go back down this road and head back to the farm and again I'm gonna stay on the right side of the road uh, because I am American and we drive on the right side of the road I'm gonna keep all my stuff on this side of the road uh, just so in case I did have another vehicle coming uh, the opposite direction we wouldn't head-on collide or I wouldn't have any conflicts that I would have to come babysit something that I learned the hard way I just re willy-nilly recorded courses when I started playing and I would have a lot of issues where uh, once I started getting my operation up and I had to have four or five tractors automated I'd be harvesting with three combines and I'd have things running into each other all the time so it's good to uh, think about how you're going to be using it and what kind of traffic because while you might not have another vehicle on this course you might have a vehicle in that field right there unloading uh, wheat and coming back to this silo and while you've got this guy doing a delivery and they might run into each other so alright we're gonna have him turn around here 
and uh, then we'll just have him loop back around and come to where we started originally from and think about when you're recording your courses also like if you've got an empty trailer now you don't want it to drive underneath the potato um, underneath the potato conveyor and fill it with potatoes so think about that too you know plan your courses out and think about what they're going to be used for if they're used for unloading uh, and you're going to have a vehicle unload a field like let's say I'm going to set up a, a course to unload field 10 and I want it to unload maybe I want it to be able to unload at every trigger point depending on what I have let's say on this map you've got your trigger point for the silos, then you have your trigger point for um, your beets and potatoes and wood chips over in the silo next door. If I was unloading, I could drive through all of those trigger points and I could have it would it would self determine where it needed to tip based on what your cargo was. And we'll go over that a little bit later. But when you have an empty trailer running around the field uh, around um, around your your farm make sure you don't go underneath uh inadvertently go under a conveyor belt that just automatically dumps and fills up your trailer for you because then it messes everything up okay so we stopped our our course we're ready to go forward now we need to save our course so we can recall it at a later date and use it over and over and over again so we go here to the little out of date diskette and <laughs> we save this as um silo you can name it whatever you want silo to sell point and uh, we're gonna call that windmill and that way we can recall that at any time now I could go ahead and drive the course as is and what it will do is it will pull up and it will start loading grain and then it will drive over the sell point and unload but since we did save it I'm gonna show you how to recall that at a later date so let's go ahead and we'll get rid of uh, the course that we have sell because it shows us we're loaded silo to sell it shows we're in the wrong mode as well so I'm gonna go ahead and clear that out with that course saved now we can use it at any time and to recall it we just go to our manage courses we're gonna find silo to sell windmill and we're gonna load that course by clicking on the solid file it brings it up it's showing us our start and our stop points and to proceed with this we're just going to pull up and we're going to go to our drive courses function and we'll select grain transport because that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be transporting grain and you'll see it brings up farm to silo uh, load it gives us the different options of what we want to load the different fruits that we can take out of the silo for this demonstration we're going to use wheat but just by clicking on the word wheat you can change your options to the different things so if you were wanting to do canola you would set it on canola okay so we're going to do wheat in this situation so we'll set it for wheat and then when we're ready to drive we're going to click drive course but we need to tell it how we want it to start it can start at the first waypoint it can start at the current waypoint which would be this one or we can have it start at the nearest waypoint so for our demonstration purposes right now we're going to go first waypoint because it will drive us straight to the very first one and get it started we're going to have wheat selected we're in the proper mode we can just hit drive course and it is going to do its thing it will pull up load it full of wheat and then it's going to drive to the sell point and unload now as far as uh, the other other things you really need to look at is stop at last point or next trigger uh, trigger you want that deactivated if it's activated when it gets to the next point it's just going to stop and wait for you to do an action so make sure that's deactivated covers you can set that to manual or, or automatic and that just means is if your trailer has a cover feature when this thing is full and we start to drive off it will pop the cover over it that's a nice little function it means I don't have to do it manually it'll do it itself does it really matter in game not really but it is a nice little function that it added into it uh, so it looks a little bit nicer so it turns the beacons on and it's gonna cover up the load and we're gonna head to the windmill 
it's going really slow right now because I had it set to uh, follow my speed of my course no faster than 20 miles an hour is what I've got it set at so along we go down the course and it's going to drive and follow our waypoints and if we want to bring up our course to see what we're following we go to settings and we double click until we get to show all and it's going to show us our course and see how our trailers bouncing around right now if I was going any faster than 20 and it's getting a little bit out of control right now if I was going any faster than I am it would get way out of control and swerve offline maybe run into a tree that's the reason I throttle the speed back to just 20 miles an hour it keeps the speed in control and it keeps the uh, the AI from running into anything so again to do that you just set your speed you go maximum speed you set it at what you want it to be and then you can click back you can either leave it on maximum speed or you can set it from recording all right so it just continues on up the course and it will do its thing and now again you use grain transport for this and you can use it to pull grain from the field uh, in overloader mode you can use it to pull it from the field and take it back to the silos and we'll cover that later on how to set up that when we do the overloader segment this tutorial basically just the basics of, of uh, course play and then how just to do the basic grain transporter our next series will cover combine mode uh, how to set up combine mode and then we'll move just right on down the different work modes and we'll show you how to do different things all right so this just drives over the trigger and when it senses that it needs to unload it will it handles everything for you so this comes in real handy let's say you build up a mass a great quantity of grain uh, hoping to get a big um, high demand so you can sell off and make the most money so let's say you amass about I don't know 200,000 300,000 liters of grain and uh, you're ready to sell it off when when they say you know what we need a whole lot of grain well if you're like me you don't mind making one or two trips but let's say on like on this map the transport company that's way up at the top of the map I get tired of driving that route so the first time I'll drive it manually record my route and then I'll let the computer do it the rest of the time because it's gonna take you know six or seven trips to do it to sell it off I'll let the computer handle that while I go do something else that is more entertaining than just driving driving truck I like to drive truck some but not a ton and if I really want to drive truck I go get in Euro truck and drive in it alright so he does a really good job of following this and yeah I could run it really fast and run the risk of uh, swerving around and hitting a tree but 20 miles an hour is going to get it done you know he's going to get from point A to point B take care of the unloads and he's less likely to have an incident which means it's less likely to pull me off of what I'm doing to babysit it so that's the reason I do go ahead and ramp the speed down a little bit let it be in under control let's see how it swings around a little bit if you're going too fast it'll lose control and it'll go nail something and you'll have to be coming over here and correcting it now if you do find yourself uh, let's say it did fall out of out of line right here and you had to stop it to, to correct your course you hit stop driver and now you want to resume let's say you you were off to the side and you now you got to get it back underneath your course so you can you know come back and get going again now the way to resume your course you need to change your start course at first waypoint to nearest waypoint and as long as you're underneath this line and just kind of move forward with it and get near an orange dot if I go ahead and hit drive course it will find that course and it'll go ahead and drive it and resume the course okay um, that's just the basics and with that said 
we're back to the silo and he's just going to keep on going and keep unloading and loading uh, as long as I've got grain in there uh, for wheat so at this point that means he's got one more trailer load he can get and then once he finishes you'll get a notification over here on the side in green that will say he's finished his work and you can come stop him and again to stop your driver you just hit stop driver and he'll uh, do his thing drive now uh, it basically if I click it he just drives it's a way for him to just go ahead and start and then stop driver stops him okay well that's the basics for it um, I hope you learned a little bit about how to use course play and the basics of course play there'll be more information uh, in the next couple of days I'll do an, a few more videos We'll get them all posted up, and I'll have a playlist of nothing but course play tutorials for you. So uh, you can pick and choose what you want to learn uh, by dividing it up into little segments. You can just learn the ones that you want to learn, and you don't have to go through all of them. Um, so this particular version is for grain, transport, and the basics. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, it lets me know that you watched the video and enjoyed it. And then, of course, if you have any questions, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel. I do do videos every day. So uh, if you want to keep up to date on when they uh, post, you can subscribe and you'll get a little email telling you uh, when that's ready. All right. Other than that, guys, thanks for watching. I do appreciate it. I appreciate all your subscribes. And until next time, please stay safe. Have a great day. And I'll see you on the next edition of Farm and Simulator 2015 with me, Mr. Moose. Bye-bye. Hey, thanks again for watching this video. And if you made it all the way to the end, well, maybe you liked it. So give me a big old thumbs up. That like goes a long way. Also, subscribe to this channel. I will update the videos every single day so there will always be something new for you to see. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you'll come back again tomorrow. Thanks for your support.